Hey everyone, it's me, and welcome back to my channel. If you remember in a previous video, I said that I wanted to try out squeegee painting, so that's what this video is. Um, you may have seen squeegee painting on like an Instagram reel or on TikTok, I guess, maybe on YouTube. I know I certainly have. What those videos usually show is just the, the paint's already down on the canvas or the paper, and then they just show you the squeegeeing, the part where they wipe across the canvas with a squeegee or a scraper or whatever. But in this, I wanted to show the whole process. And when I say show the whole process, I don't mean that from like a tutorial standpoint. This was me spending about an hour and a half or so on an evening trying to figure out how this technique works. So for this first one, I was like, oh, let's try something similar to like a landscape. So I did some blue and white up on the top and then some green and some pinky red down on the bottom to say, signify flowers. And I definitely learned a lot from doing this, but one, the thing I learned the most is probably that this wastes a lot of paint. So here's my first swipe down the canvas. It's fairly satisfying, but you can tell that all of those reddish pink spots on the bottom really didn't show up because they got covered up by the topmost layer of like blue and green. So what I didn't really realize is how hard you have to press down in order for this to work. So you really are scraping off probably 80% of the paint that you actually put on the canvas. And if you don't, then those colors that are toward the bottom or towards the end of your your squeegee pool they'll get hidden but when i pulled across horizontally some of those pink flowers started to show up again because i was removing some of those top layers of paint as i went across you also see that like there's some parts where like the paint skips and you wind up with like a blank spot of just like empty canvas and you can see that down at the bottom in the grass area you can obviously like go back and add more paint and scrape again and, and so on and so forth. But in this one, I just was trying to, like I said, kind of figure things out. I cut a piece off of this uh, Sharpie container so that I could make a little smaller swipe to create like a rainbow sort of design in the sky. So as I went, I, I added more paint and scraped again and added paint and scraped again to, to try and hone the design so to speak. And I really feel like this gives off like kindergarten finger painting vibes. I don't hate it. I actually like the red and the green at the bottom quite a bit, but I don't know. There's just something corny about it. So for the next one, I thought I'm going to try and do something a little bit less abstract and more representational. So I've seen where if you put the paint down, you can scrape and it'll reveal something fairly, like a pretty sharp design. It's like just maybe a little blurry around the edges. So since it's the year of the rabbit, um, it's Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, I thought I'll do like the rabbit for the Chinese Zodiac. And bunnies are cute anyway. You can see through this process though that it really wasn't that simple. So first of all, a lot of the videos where they're doing something that's more representational and less just vibes and aesthetic, if they're trying to do something that looks like something, they're using a very precise little squeeze bottle, like almost with like a, 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 a syringe type tip to it that's so precise. And I'm just using like white paint straight out of the bottle and it's just like globbing down so that's number two. So you wanna press really hard and even across and really scrape as much paint off as you can, but you also do not wanna to put too much paint on the canvas to begin with. I would say you wanna use really thin layers. So you see here, I'm hesitant to scrape that red paint all the way down because I don't wanna just cover up all of the white and all of the, the bunny. So you're seeing their face is just gone, any face that I attempted to make. Now, I watched some tutorials, I guess, I don't know if they were tutorials so much as they were just demonstrations. 
And if you pull the paint once, it will cover everything up. But if you pull it one more time to pull off the excess paint, then whatever paint was on the bottom layer kind of soaks into the material and that's what will show. So really you might do one scrape and then another full scrape. But the problem with that, or at least in my opinion, is whatever paint is accumulated on your squeegee, when you pull down the second time, may end up transferring to the painting as well. So it it's one of those things, like this is one of those painting techniques that looks so simple, but in reality is it's quite difficult to perfect. And so at a certain point I was like, I don't wanna drag it across. So I just pressed into the canvas and I actually think that it, it very much gave a cool texture. And I feel like if you tilt your head and squint, it does kind of look like a bunny's face. Uh, and I just added some silver as a final embellishment. Now, later I decided I would go back and add something and refine this, but this is where it is for now with just squeegeeing. This was my third attempt and I thought, okay, the first one I kind of did a landscape. The second one I tried to do a bunny. This third one, I'm just gonna go for like pattern geometric type feeling because uh, I've seen a lot of those for squeegee painting. And this was the worst one by far. In fact, this one I binned. I just didn't even keep it. I threw it away. And thankfully these canvases are not mega expensive and I got them for Christmas, not this year, but last year. So uh, they've been sitting in my closet for over 365 days. That means that I'm not particularly attached to this art supply these canvases so it's okay if I try and fail and like I said that was one of my new year's resolutions this year was to be less precious about stuff and if I want to use something use it and so I definitely did that and that's what it looks like it's not horrible I guess but uh, it's not the vibe so I threw that one away this was my last attempt and by far the best so on this one I tried to incorporate all of the things I had learned along the way. So I'm kind of putting, it's hard to tell from this, a light amount of paint and I'm doing something that's somewhat representational but not super structured either. So that if it's not super precise, it'll still look good. The paint layer I used for the, the sun up in the corner there is very light and same with like the sun rays around it. It's just a very thin layer of paint. And I decided like, okay, for this design, I'm really going to work with this technique and not against it. So I'm like really pressing like the tip of the little squeeze bottle all the way against the can canvas and kind of spreading it that way rather than globbing up paint. And then for this white that I'm using to fill in the spaces between and to help blend, I spread it thin with a brush ahead of time, which that's not typical of this technique, but I really just did not want big, thick glops of paint. And I didn't want at the end, when I got to the bottom of the canvas, to squeegee off like a pound of paint. So here we go, here's the scrape and we'll see how it looks. I'm pressing very hard. You can tell how much force I'm using. I'm standing up as I'm doing this to try and get as much even pressure across the canvas as possible. And I think that looks really cool. So obviously they're supposed to be representing pine trees. And since the, the way that it scraped across the bottom kind of resembled a reflection. So I was like, I'm gonna add a water line so that it looks like what is on the top of the canvas is reflecting into water. And again, this is kind of abstract. It's, I guess I would say impressionistic. Um, and so I used white to kind of reflect like the shimmer across the water. And so I did some horizontal pulls across that uh, to represent like the, the horizontal shimmering of the reflection in the water. And I'm adding just little by little and scraping thoroughly. So on each of these passes, I'm scraping it maybe one, two, three times across because I don't want there to be thick streaky white bits. I just want it to be kind of suggestive, like I said, of rippling water. And so you can see here, it's just adding kind of a, a fog almost to it. And the last thing I wanted to do was to add basically like a shoreline, the land 
that the trees are sitting on because right now I guess the trees are kind of floating in the water so they need some land to sit on so I used a, a much darker brownish green for that and then scraped across to create that and so I decided uh, at this point I'm going to leave well enough alone with a lot of those canvases the previous ones I reached a point where I thought that looked better and I should have stopped so I stopped while I was ahead on this one And as you can see, I went back to the bunny and added some Posca pen to sharpen the design. And that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my first attempt at squeegee painting and you learned something if you wanna try this out yourself. I'm tempted to continue trying, but it wastes so much paint that it makes it hard, but it's so fun. And especially since I felt like I finally was getting the hang of it towards the end. And if you want me to try again, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'll talk to you later. Bye.